So we're going to get your, uh, on this little black horse. I'm going to try to let his defenses down to where he doesn't have to, uh, yeah, where he doesn't have to defend himself. So I got this really long rope. We'll try this first. And I'm just going to flip this out here and try to convince him that this is the space that I need. I need to be here, right? And then also, not only do I need this space, I need him to maybe move out of the way. Right through here. Now, if I had a calf roping horse, this would be correct. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And again, and again, and again, and again, right? Was he like that when you got him? That's what, and I don't mean to offend anybody, and that's why I'm going to use the word extreme. Extreme natural horsemanship does this to a horse. Okay. And you can figure out what that means. What's that? Predator, yeah. This idea that to gain ultimate control, you need the hindquarters out of the way. And to get ultimate respect, you need to have him look at you with two eyes. If you did it once or twice, it's sort of like a student, if they learn, what's one plus one? It's two. Okay, you're done. Then don't do it again. So in itself, fine, it's okay. Now, I don't do it, but it's okay. But if you turn it into a damn drill, So we want to set this horse loose. He's, he was a Mustang that was captured, right? And we want to turn him loose onto the desert again. There he goes. But we couldn't because he's institutionalized. He says, I can't stop staring a human in the face. I'm not confident enough to leave. So with here, on a real sensitive one now, if you had some range colt that he's going to move all right, you throw it here. So you guys remember this. So to get him to go around, you might toss that over there and he'd already be gone, right? So you had to play with these angles. And you let him go. And that's what, that's the reason for the longer rope. So he can have a sense that he, he got to leave. And then now, see, he goes, oh, I know what to do now. We change directions. We go the other way, because that's what you do, right? So you let him experience that. This isn't to work him hard. This isn't to get him sweaty, okay? And then you might think about a downward transition. There's a trot. I wonder if I could have him come down to the walk without him facing. Not quite. And then he says, I know what to do now. We go the other direction. So you have a robot. Or what we call, actually, in the training, you'd call that a conditioned response, which isn't always a good thing. He pulls on himself. He bumped himself. There's, he bumped himself. So then he learns the border on his own. So there's no jerking going on. But you'd see people go like this, bump, and they'd be bumping them. Your body's not right. Your hip's too far out. This and this, this and this. But they're not allowing anything. And so this position is so important. And a lot of people that say, well, I can't get my horse to go around because you're staring him in the face. Remember yesterday, the position? If you, if you start to look ahead of the shoulder, and especially ahead of the nose, he is to stop. That's what, they're, that's what nature tells them to do. So here, I'm taking up the backside here. There's my walk. That's real good. And then now, how about this? Come off the circle onto a straight line. 
off the circle, off onto a straight line. Really nice. Now he's straight to me. That's real good. Now I'm going to position myself here, and he starts to drift into me. See, I'm going to be on this side now. Gosh, darn, yeah. I'm going to just toss this over here. That's not to scare him. First, it does. He says, I, I just don't believe you. Don't you want me to face you? So in this, in this case, in this uh, context, we're, this is called fr freeing the horse up. We're, we're turning this horse loose. We're getting him free. Downward transition to a walk, great. Keep walking. Keep walking. And then you just, as simple as this, just walk away. Real nice. Look at how balanced of a turn that was. And then from here, there's that spot again. I'll look this way. See, pretty soon when you're leading your horse, wherever you look, that's where they'll, they'll go. You can steer them from up here. I'm going to look to my right, and I wouldn't want my horse to be in the way. He's getting in the way here. If I invited him in, that'd be different. Toss this out there. See that? Defensive posture. Why would that offend him, right? So if you look at the horse behavior, he, he'll let me come in there. I can climb on his back. I could brush him and give him a carrot. And he loves it. But then when I ask him for movement, he's offended. Or he got scared. Downward transition to the walk. I just shift the weight back a little. So you take that rein, just lift up on it, just a little, and then he walks. And then you can stop a foot. So you get in time with that right front. So it'd be when that right front hits the ground, so it'd be now, 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 like this. And on a horse that's a little pushy in the front, see, that's what I mean by pushy. I'm coming in here, I'm looking ahead, and he speeds up, then you'd have a hard time stopping that foot from behind the shoulder. So what we want to do here is get a parallel stop, but he's speeding up. See, say so blast through it. So if he does that, then he's going to push through your rein. So it's all the same. Downward transition down to a walk. I'm going to try to stop a foot. Where I'd, get a where I'd get a parallel stop. I'm going to look ahead now and say, hey, don't go over here. <laughs> don't go over there. But if you have a training method, remember where you go like this? He's facing you and you lift your hand high like the gurus do. Does it work? Yes, it works. It works. You get your horse to go. But you're building something you don't want to build. That horse is learning to go. You're putting your hand up in his line of sight for the direction you want him to go and then expect him to go through there, the argument would be, yeah, but he goes that way, but then he goes back first and then out and around. It's like, but that's pressure. That's still pressure because there's, there's an object in front of you. Now you have to go around it. So you'd like to go to the right, but there's a rock there. So now I have to go back. So nice attempt at an argument, but it's, it's still pressure. So instead, you just direct this here. That's all I need. This is direction, back and forth. And then you see this, which also works. See, everything can work, but you gotta, you gotta be smart and, and think of long-term and how a horse thinks. Back up, it works. So right and left and right and left and left and right equals back, okay? But how about backing him up on the basis of shifting his weight up and back? Shift his weight up and back and set that. Then the rope doesn't, then you don't have to dull out the cue to go right and left with this. 
Right, left means back. Then what does right mean? Back. Then you can't get your horse to turn very well. So you shift this up there. So when my posture, and it's the same on the ground, the same on their back. So then when I get on their back, I do the same thing. So I come, I get tall here. See the movement? And then I shift that down. There you go. And that now he's set up for that, that left. Shift the weight up, up here, and back. There it is. Really nice. Now since he's got that right front ready to go, I'll come over on this side. See it? That right front was ready to go. But he doesn't. There's not enough impulsion for him to keep going. Right? Right through here. Through here. Through here. So step by step then, that's fine. I'll look over his wither. Up over his wither. Up over his wither. Up over his wither. That's turning a horse, that's setting a horse free. So he's been trapped. I'll take this position here as if I'm saying you can come back to me when you're ready. There's that left lead that he's got no problem with now. That's very stress relieving for him. The way he left like that, that little attitude which he has a right to have. There. So that just happened. That's good. Then when I start to look here to the left, he's not in that space. Because I'm like, you know what, I want to walk over this way, right? But it'll take a while. That doesn't get fixed in a day. But if you're con you just stay consistent, you just clear the space here. And he shouldn't, he shouldn't go into that, into that space. I'm looking right through here, and I can keep moving my line. Then I'll move here. And I'm going to let him go. We'll just let him go. My interpretation of what he's saying is there's too, too much damn pressure. I've had too much damn pressure, not from JC. She doesn't, she's not one to put pressure on him. But maybe before, he says, I've had pressure like you can't believe. He says, nobody, nobody allowed me to get free, get freed up. It was just do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. See? He's winning in for the others. He's wanting to go back to being a horse. Turned him loose on the desert. He's going to look for the others. And then I'll just keep bringing him back to me. See, he fixes his own balance. He had the wrong lead behind. He corrected himself. And I'll just keep walking away here. I can use that wall a little bit. Watch. And come over here. There. Good. That's good. So I didn't need it. But I just get a little closer to that wall. Help him, help him find it and bring him back. I'm going to start to look to my right. And if he pushes, that's how he feels about it, right? He says, I'm, I, I got to push into that pressure. That's what I've been taught. There you go. Coil this up. Look to my right. Good. Come here. Look to my left. There it is. A little better. There. Let him out.
Okay, JC, come over here and step into the circle when he goes around, so you might have to hurry and come in now without the flag. Keep walking this way. Okay, look back and ask him to step up. Just throw the rope behind. Coil it up again. Seems he's getting faster now. He's stepping up. So as soon as you get that coiled, throw it again. So you're blocking him, see? So you, you, you threw it, but then you, you, you walked into him, and that's what he's doing to you. So it's a little angle change. So you gotta, so when I asked you to look to the left, I was just, you're looking, but you're half-heartedly looking. You're, you're like this. Uh, look. Like there was a dog on your heels. You gotta have it, make it important to look over there. Okay, go again. No, right through here. Walk fast. Like you heard of an explosion over your left shoulder, then throw it. There you go. Now have him get ahead of you. Don't, you're blocking him now. See, to keep turning to the left. So you threw it, and then when you go forward, he's wanting to go around you. He's speeding up to go around, and then you, you go ahead of him. You block him again. So your position is so important. You guys gotta, gotta no, go ahead. You gotta figure out what you're doing to these horses here. They know where you're looking. That's how they know. I hate to get in the predator prey thing. Horses must be stupid because they think a llama is a lion. I don't know. That I don't agree with this kind of thing. It's just that they're scared and they're unsure. It's nothing to do with, with smelling like a predator. We smell like predators. That, that whole thing makes me sick. But in, a, in another light, they feel a predator that's not experienced looking at them. That's why a juvenile predator can't catch the prey because they're projecting too much energy in the wrong places. So they're not controlling themselves, they're not patient. And so when you're doing this, they can see, they can tell exactly where you're looking and where you're, where you're heading. They are keen on movement. So they can, so when you're going around, you throw that rope and he, he starts to walk faster here on this side, and then you just pinch him off. You say, no, no, don't go past me, right? So you, you just keep circling. Okay, do it again. To, I want you to, when you throw that rope, keep going to the left. So that's why I wanted you to rotate, but when you throw the rope, you just keep going straight, and then you, you, you stopped him. You want, to go, you want to have him go around you, okay? Okay, look back over your left shoulder. Now, before you throw it, really look back at his hip. Look back at his hip. Now, keep, but keep walking to the, go walk to the left. You're walking in a straight line, looking back. You've got to walk to your left. Start to walk to your left. Now, look back at his hip and walk to your left. Like this. Now, throw, yep, keep this up. Now, throw it behind, right behind his hip. Coil it up again. And as soon as you get it coiled, do it again. Go. You're almost there. There you go. Look back. Don't 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 look at him. Because you shut him down again. Don't look at his face. I mean, there. Do it again. Let him go, let him go, let him go ahead of you. Let him go ahead of you, let him all the way out. Look behind him now. If you look up by his shoulder or his head, he'll face up. Behind him, you're looking at ahead of him. Look behind him you're, and your you're line of trajectory. There you go. Look at me, here. Walk this way. Walk to B, see B? There, and to the left. Now walk to R, to your left. Okay, now get behind him again. So you're just taking that line. There you go. Now you just wait for him to come to you. There you go. Now have him go off to the right. You're gonna go, you're gonna go to the right. Oh, okay. Now throw it out there, get him going on to the 
onto the circle. So then you'll get it, and then you so you don't miss your opportunity when you have that that life flowing. You just keep it going. Throw it. There. Let him get ahead of you. Let him get ahead of you. Drop back behind him. And then look behind his tail, about four or five feet behind his tail. Now throw the rope behind his tail. There you go. That was enough energy. Okay, now start walking a bigger circle and you bring him back to you.